out. We got two flats on the trailer. So, we got to go get two new tires put on. But anyway, at least we have the time to do it. So, that's a good thing. But everything checked out fine this morning. Everything checked out fine when Chris stopped for fuel. And now we got two tires with holes in them. But anyway, uh, she got about a minute and a half a video earlier, which I'll put on after this, showing her going through Flagstaff in the rain. And although it was looking real pretty ahead of us when she woke me up, since I have to turn around, it's not looking pretty anymore. But we will check in again. Oh, we are at the TA in Holbrook, Arizona. Uh, let me roll these windows up so you can hear me. I'm editing up yesterday's vlog so I can get a little bit ahead. And we're getting the two tires changed on the trailer. And we're going ahead and getting the service done while we're at it. So Alizé's sitting here going nuts with all the people moving around. <laughs> oh, really? And we're going to be here for a little bit. The guy hadn't even started on the service. He's pulling our filters. Here he comes back with our filters now. So we're going to get that done, get everything all took care of, and that way we don't have to stop again later. Uh, move my iPad to the southern mountain here. So she don't squish it. Well, you can see she gets all hyper with people messing around the truck. Um, but it shouldn't take too long. We should be out of here okay, in yeah. about an hour, hour and a half. Best to get them both done at the same time. Uh, they made us drop the trailer in one bay, and then we pulled around to a different bay for uh, the service. But you know that's an expense that driver uh you know if you're owner op lease op whatever that's an expense that you got to deal with close to three hundred dollars for an oil change so <laughs> here we are so i'll check in later after we're done and hooked up and rolling again all righty we got the tires changed. I went ahead and got a service done. $300.45 for an oil change and loop job. Wow. <laughs> but that's what it's like when you're uh, working for yourself. Uh, the tires. Uh, get built differently so uh, I don't have the amount on the tires yet. The company has a national account and uh, since it's uh, the, on the trailer that's the company's responsibility. Uh, I'm responsible for the 10 tires on the tractor. So anyway we're heading east again. Just about where we were when Chris woke me up. And let's see, three and a half hours from the time she woke me up. Actually, that's not bad time wise. Uh, I've had to sit seven, eight, nine hours to get a tire changed. So this ain't bad. But anyway, we're rolling. And nice clear night, 76 degrees. Nothing off. 
off in the distance with a little bit of traffic. That's the way it is across I-40 at night out here way out west. And it looks, in the camera it might look like traffic is heavy, but this ain't nothing. Right, when you uh, consider daytime driving out east, which we're heading to Pennsylvania, so we're going to hit some traffic, we're going to hit some nasty tolls, and we're going to hit some narrow roads that are fun to maneuver in. Now, in a comment, a viewer asked me why I dislike Chicago. And I dislike Chicago for the same reason that I dislike New England. You have too many tolls. Not enough parking. cram-packed full of anti-gun liberals. I mean, Illinois took forever to get a concealed carry license. Primarily because of Chicago. And up in New England, you got states like New York, Massachusetts, New Jersey that are so anti-gun that I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I don't want to get too much into politics. I am a, I'll just suffice it to say that I am a strict constitutionalist and a firm believer in the Second Amendment. That's the reason this is our KBA trucking show. The right to keep and bear arms. Which is an individual right as affirmed by the U.S. Supreme Court. certain states. Yes, California is anti-gun, but I hate to say it, they're not as bad as some of the other uh, states out there, some of the New England states, or Chicago area, or D.C. Combine that with the extreme population densities, makes traffic a bear. And then to be taxed additionally, for roads that I'm already taxed for and then to restrict me to only using one or two lanes out of multiple lanes when I'm paying for all of them that sort of gets on my nerves now I know Allie's from Massachusetts but she seems to have a good head on her shoulders and understands things. Which may be why she now has a place in Houston. But when I look back on the history of this country, Boston Tea Party was because of a one cent tax or half cent tax on 100 pounds of tea. Massachusetts later becomes known as Taxachusetts. And, you know, we go on into the development of the revolution and the final straw which pushed us into war was when the British wanted to raid one of our armories and confiscate all the firearms at the armory. starting revolution 1776 then we had the confederation of states or articles of confederation and then in 1787 we did the constitution and several states felt that the constitution was grossly incomplete because all it listed is what powers the government has and says basically, you know, the states can't do certain things, but everything else 
is up to the states. And they didn't put any rights in for the individuals. If you wanted to become a member of the union, they felt you should abide by certain rules as far as how you treat your citizens. So the Bill of Rights was written. Some people refer to the preamble and, and the First Amendment and say it doesn't apply to the states. Now I'm going to get on and on with this, but just um, trying to get a point across. Okay. Now the preamble does not say anything about the federal government. Preamble basically says that the Bill of Rights was written to protect the Constitution from government. Period. End of story. The First Amendment, Congress shall make no law regarding the establishment of religion or restricting the free exercise thereof, and on and on. The other four portions, freedom of the press, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, and the right to redress grievances with government. But the Second Amendment specifically states that it is a right of the people. And then the Tenth Amendment defines who gets what powers. Those powers not granted in the United States by the Constitution or prohibited by it to the states are hereby reserved to the states respectively or to the people. So a little bit of lesson in English. Okay. Or is a divisor. That means it separates things. A or B. Okay. You can have A. You can have B, but you can't have both. So when you have something reserved to the states respectively, which means the individual states, or to the people, that means the states get it. And if they get it, then the people don't have it. Or that the people get it, and if the people get it, then the states don't have it. And the Second Amendment clearly states that it is a right of the people, the individuals, us. Oh, big bumps. Uh, that answers Trucker Josh's question, how we can sleep going down the road. <laughs> we get used to it. But anyway, that's a big issue with me. Uh, excess taxation, discriminatory practices against trucks, and civil rights across the board to include the Second Amendment. So I try to avoid states that try to deny me my rights or cities that try to deny me my rights. And I act in accordance with the law. That right there is my home. And if I hit it a state, one of the few states that does not allow or accept my concealed carry license and my Second Amendment constitutionally guaranteed right, then I break it down, you know, unload it, put it in the sleeper, keep it secured. So I act in accordance with the law. But I still try to avoid those areas. Now, I do go to California a lot. And that, you know, serves as a little bit of a quandary there. We don't have the tolls to worry about. I mean, there are a couple of tolls in California, but I rarely, rarely see them. Most of the people I deal with are 
words, I don't go near Berkeley. I don't go near San Francisco. I stay out of the left-wing, libtardian, nutjob meccas. And if this costs me any viewers, I'm sorry. It's my opinion. You know, I swore an oath when I went in the military, and I still believe in that oath. Okay. But I really have to de deal with the extreme left-wing element when I'm in California. On the other hand, Chicago, New England, I have to deal with it quite a bit. Now, upstate New York, it's conservative. The problem with New York is population density of the five boroughs that the rest of the people in New York don't have any say about their own government. And I honestly wish that Long Island would secede or be booted out of the state, be made a separate state. And I sort of feel the same way about California. There's scuttlebutt about California breaking up. I would love it. Because those population dense meccas would lose a lot of the stranglehold they have over the rest of the company with wackos like Nancy Pelosi. Barbara Boxer and other idiots like that I have no common sense whatsoever. We have to pass it to see what's in it. All right. Our Constitution and our nation is not a game of let's make a deal. You don't choose what's behind door number three because you don't know what's behind door number three. downright ludicrous to do that. Now look at the mess that we have. A lot of people losing their jobs and all because of it. But anyway, that's why I try to avoid certain areas. Just I end up having to deal with people that end up making me angry. get an idea. Tolls, traffic, truck restrictions, liberalism. That's what I try to avoid. So if you have any more questions, please post in the comments. Uh, for some reason, the comments thing is acting a little flaky. I hadn't quite figured that one out yet, but I'm getting better on it. Or you can go to my Facebook page, which is linked at the end of the video and in my comment section or description section down there. Go to my Facebook page and leave me a message. I will be more than happy to answer either on video or directly any questions you can have. So that'll do it for right now.
makes me wonder, you know, what people think or aren't thinking. You know, it's a safety issue. It's about to start raining. Well, actually, it's just barely sprinkling a little bit right now. And I've been seeing lightning off in the distance for quite a while. starts raining, it's going to be even harder to see this guy. 